A vector quantity has magnitude and direction. This contrasts with scalar quantities, which have magnitude but not direction. Examples of vector quantities include velocity, displacement and acceleration. Scalar quantities include speed, distance, mass and temperature. Vectors can be represented using arrowed lines, the lengths of which are proportional to the magnitude of the vector quantity. The direction is that of the vector. Vectors cannot be added together without their direction being taken into account. To add vectors together, the parallelogram law can be used. In the diagram, vector A is added to vector B to give the resultant vector R. It is frequently convenient to draw only half of the parallelogram in which case the vectors are added head to tail. It is necessary to be able to answer vector questions using either scale drawings or mathematical equations and a sketch diagram. Graphs can be used to represent and calculate the motion of a body. There are two commonly used types of graph, velocity time and displacement time. The gradient of a displacement time graph tells us the velocity of the body. The gradient of a velocity time graph tells us the acceleration of the body. The displacement of a body can be calculated by finding the area under a velocity time graph. Thus, to find a body's displacement from a velocity time graph, the area is calculated. Or, to find a body's acceleration from a velocity time graph, the gradient is calculated. The graphs shown here represent a moving body with a constant velocity and a stationary body. The graphs shown here represent the motion of a body accelerating and a body moving with a constant velocity. You should already know that for an object travelling with a constant acceleration, acceleration equals final velocity minus initial velocity over time. In A-level physics, you will only have to consider situations where a body's acceleration is constant. There are three equations which can be used in reference to these situations, which enable us to calculate components of their motion which were previously unknown. It is essential to know and be able to apply these formulae. They must be learnt. A body falling directly to the ground, with no force acting upon it apart from gravity, can be said to be in free fall. If, during the time in the air, the body also has a horizontal velocity, it is said to have projectile motion. The horizontal and vertical motions are totally independent of one another. Therefore, no matter what the horizontal velocity of the body, it will always take the same time to reach the ground.
If thrown horizontally, the object will have a horizontal initial velocity of u, a vertical initial velocity of 0, and a vertical acceleration of g. The exact path of a projectile is determined by its initial velocity and angle. If a body is thrown from the ground at velocity u and angle alpha above the horizontal, the initial horizontal velocity is u cos alpha, and the initial vertical velocity is u cos 90 minus alpha, or u sine alpha. Usually, the acceleration of a body is or can be taken to be constant. However, this is not always the case. The same rules for graphical calculations apply to graphs which show non-uniform acceleration. For velocity time graphs, the body's acceleration can be calculated by finding the gradient of the tangent of the graph at a given point. For distance time graphs, the velocity can be calculated by finding the gradient of the tangent of the graph at a given point. Newton's first law states that an object continues in its state of rest or movement with a uniform velocity unless a resultant force acts upon it. Newton's second law states that the rate of change of momentum of a body is proportional to the resultant force which acts upon it. For an object of constant mass being pushed by a constant force so that its velocity increases from u to v in a given time, Newton's second law tells us that the force is proportional to the rate of change of momentum. We already know that A equals V minus U over T, so we can say that F is proportional to MA. The equation for motion now becomes F equals KMA. K is a constant with no unit, whose size depends on the unit to be chosen for the force. The value of K is set at 1 by defining the unit of force as the force which would give a mass of 1 kilogram an acceleration of 1 meter per second squared. We can therefore say that for a fixed mass, F equals MA.